just a normal family. A little awkward, sometimes weird, loud and crazy. Wait, did I say normal? Oops, my bad. Stick around. Get to know us. We have Cheyenne and Tyree. This is Savannah. I'm Michelle. And this is The Shell Bill Life. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, and I am so looking forward to the weekend. Y'all don't even know. This weekend will be the first Saturday in maybe like a month that I didn't have to get up early, didn't have any plans or anything like that. I could just sleep in and worry about me. <laughs> so I can't wait. For so today is Halloween. But you guys know we don't celebrate Halloween, so that doesn't mean anything to us. So life is normal today. We still have Bible study. So I know I didn't film a whole lot on Savannah's birthday. I just wanted to live in the moment. I cooked dinner at home, which was her request. I wanted to take her out, but we didn't. So did that and I didn't pull the camera out a lot um, I just didn't and then you guys seen that when I left I went to Ikea to get money back on my rug which I was so happy I was able to do I don't know if you know Ikea does that so if you sign up for the family rewards or whatever it's free I think that's what it's called, the family rewards or the family plan or something like that. And it's basically just like having a Safeway card, club card or something like that. It's free. So every time I make a purchase, I have them scan that. Sometimes club member rewards get a cheaper um, price on items than the people that don't get it. And sometimes, you know, it don't. But I still have them scan it. And because I had them scan the rug. When it went down to a sale price, I jumped on it. I was able to get um, a little over $40 back for the rug. I don't know if I told you guys how much I got back. So yeah, I was happy about that. So what's the next holiday coming up? Thanksgiving. So my aunt already texted me and supposedly Thanksgiving is going to be at one of my cousin's house this year. I haven't contacted my cousin yet to see what they want me to bring or if that's even still the case, but I'm kind of getting excited about Thanksgiving. When I was younger, you guys, and my grandmother was alive, Thanksgiving was always at her house. She passed away in 2006. Um, December 1st, 2006, I will never forget. When I was 12, she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. She had a double mastectomy and the cancer went away. She was in remission for years and years and years. And then when the cancer came back, um, it came back like full-fledged, full-on, all in her bones, I mean, just everywhere. And I wanna cry right now just thinking of it because My grandma was like a second mom to me. She's like a second mom to everyone, all of us grandkids. So anyway, Thanksgiving would always be at her house and I would see the cousins, the uncles, the aunts, people you hadn't regularly seen all year long. We were gathered at my grandmother's house. She was definitely the glue that held this family together. Well, at least on my mom's side. And when she passed away, we all just scattered to the wind. So 
I don't get to see my cousins a lot. A lot of my cousins whom I love and I miss. Some of my cousins that you don't care about seeing. Let's not lie, we all got some of them in our family. But her cancer came back. She was in the hospital and we knew, you know, to expect the worst. And even though when you expect the worst, it's still never easy for, you know, seeing your loved one pass away. I mean, we did have faith in God because God could have healed her. We lived in Southern California at the time in the same town my mom lives in. And I will never forget, I had a red Dodge Caravan at the time. And me and my kids, both of my brothers, and I think two cousins, I don't know, but we packed my van up and we went to make a trip to her because we knew it was probably going to be the last time that um, we see her. Gosh, I'm making myself cry this early in the morning. Anyway, um, I remember visiting and the whole time we were there, every day I was at the hospital, like all day long or whatever, just visiting her. And the doctors were really surprised because they were like, for the amount of cancer in her body, she wasn't in pain, she didn't complain. I mean, yeah, she, I mean, she didn't feel her normal self and she really wasn't eating and I'm sure she was uncomfortable, but the doctors kept asking, are you in pain, are you in pain? And she said, no, my grandmother had a very high tolerance of pain and we know that's only God, that was her faith in God. Um, Where, how did I get started on this? How? That day before we drove back to Sacramento, all of us, you know, we went to the hospital to say goodbye again because I pretty much knew, but I would try to have faith that, you know, yeah, you know, God can heal her, she can get better. But I knew that was the last time I was going to see her. I really hate this here, you guys. So anyway, I was one of the last ones lingering in the room because I knew we had to get back because a lot of us had to get back for work the next day. And normally when I go to Lancaster, I mean, as soon as I open my eyes and the sun rises, I'm ready to come back to Sacramento. That's, you know, how quick I'm leaving my mom's house because, you know, I want to rest that day. But the day that I, we left, I lingered because I just wanted to be there with my grandmother because I knew that I wouldn't see her anymore. I remember giving her a hug and kissing her and telling her I loved her. And I'm walking out the room and I turned around and I'll never forget the vision of my grandmother. She was a short woman. She was a heavy woman her most of her whole life, well, at least as long as I've known her. And because of the cancer, she lost weight. And so she was like, always saying that, I'm losing weight, I don't look good anymore. <laughs> so to see my grandmother in the bed, really small and skinny and frail, and I turned around and she just waved like this at me. And I smiled and blew a kiss. And I walked down the hall, like crying, because I knew that was the last time I was gonna see my grandmother alive. <laughs> How'd y'all get me on this subject? Can't blame y'all. We were talking about Thanksgiving, that's right. And actually that weekend, I had planned on putting the Christmas tree up. Well, she passed away December 1st, but that weekend before, that's when we were at, um, in Southern California. And I think it was Thanksgiving that weekend and it just wasn't the same. Cause so that next week, I kept calling, checking on her and, oh yeah, she's in good spirits, but I know what good spirits mean, so. That Friday, December 1st, 2006, I called my mom and, you know, she had passed away. I had to pause the camera and it was too early for me to be in my feelings like that right now. Anyway, so well, I can tell you guys the story without crying. I called my mom, found that she had passed away. And I, my mom had came actually the next day, I think. And um, she told me, because my aunt that lived there, she handled all the funeral stuff for my grandmother to get back to, for my grandmother's body to get back here to Sacramento. So my mom came that weekend and I'm gonna put up my Christmas tree and 
I just really wasn't in the mood and my mom was like don't do that to the kids because my kids were you know young still and I really didn't have the energy I didn't want to celebrate it I'm thinking I'm like Christmas will never be the same no holiday will ever be the same which is not but we've learned to live you know without her of course um, but yeah so I finally did put my Christmas tree up and um, my mom actually stayed with me I think maybe like six weeks or so something like that I don't know um, it was healing for her, healing for me, healing for the kids. It was really hard on Savannah. Savannah took it really hard. She, um... How old was Savannah at the time? I don't know. I have to think about it. But she really was just like uncontrollable, crying at the funeral and at the gravesite. You know, she kept asking, where is she? Anyway... So she is buried here in Sacramento and I've only gone to her grave maybe like um, two or three times. Have to put some more water in here. So yeah, I've only gone to the grave maybe like two or three times since she passed away and you guys are going to laugh when I tell you why. Um, well first of all, going to the graveyard, that's for us that are here that are remaining. My grandmother's body is there but I know her soul has moved on with the Lord so that's for us but the reason why I don't go often to the graveyard is because where she's buried if any of you guys know me or remember and know that I have an issue with wet grass I have an issue with soggy grass I have an issue just stepping in grass period the grass has to be like really firm and crunchy and not wet in order for me to step on it I don't know I just have this weird like I get the heebie-jeebies when I step in it so that's the reason why I don't go and where she's buried there's like this dirt road that I'll walk down but then I have to veer off to um, go to where her where she's buried so that's the reason why I really don't go to the graveyard and plus I know she's not there that's mainly something for us to help us heal so now that I'm telling you guys this, I think I may take a trip there soon. Okay, let me make my coffee because I'm not forgetting it this morning. I'm off work and I'm debating whether or not I should go visit my grandmother's gravesite. I mean, I have time and it's close by. I still feel like crying. And she was on my mind for some reason this morning so maybe I should go in the grass but I think I can still go visit her grave from here I don't think I'll be able to, I don't think I have to step in wet grass <sighs> you know I think the reason why I don't come here because coming here I mean I know she's not around anymore and it's real but coming here makes it so real 
and I didn't bring flowers or anything because it was spur of the moment, but I mean, we come to the gravesite, that's for us. That's not for them, because like I told you guys this morning, um, they're not there. I believe that when people die, they go to heaven or hell. Yes, I do believe in hell. And I also don't believe that they can communicate with us. I do not believe, I believe in evil spirits, but I don't believe those are people. They can't communicate to us from the dead. So I know that, but I do believe that if God allows her to look down every now and then to see her family, I believe that can possibly happen. I'm not sure. <sighs> All right, you guys. I'm here. I might as well get out, right? Let's go. This is the dirt road I told you guys that I usually walk on and I will not come in the winter because all of this is wet and muddy. Some people over there visiting their loved one. peaceful out here other than the sound of the sprinklers and I mean you heard the cars from the road but it's really peaceful one of the reasons why I don't come is not only that I know she's not there her soul is not there but I never want to leave even know if I'm going to show you guys all of this but every time I come I don't want to leave God I miss her so much I had the best grandmother in the world and I know you guys may say the same thing and that's okay you may have thought you had the best grandmother in the world, but I had the best grandmother in the world. And I was the favorite grandkid. Now I'm gonna get calls from my cousin and be like, no, I was, no, this was this person. No, it was me. I was her favorite grandkid. And then my kids were her favorite grandkids. It took me a while to find um, where she was buried and then after I found her name then I'm like okay yeah that, that's right that's where it is but I don't come here often you guys I've been here maybe now like five times and she passed away in 2001 no 2006 sorry so Savannah was five years old when she died and she took it really hard better get going <sighs> okay so I'm at home and we're about to leave for Bible study, but I just wanted to show you guys something well, I can't actually show you guys. I can tell you it. So I got a certificate today and I would show you guys, but it's the name of the college like plastered all over it. 
I don't have a fancy, fancy editor. That way I can blur out the college name or whatever, but I will read it to you. I was not expecting this. Me and one other dental assistant instructor got this. It said certificate of recognition presented to Michelle Rogers in recognition and sincere appreciation of your outstanding performance and dedication to, and it's the college name. And it says this honor recognizes top performers who demonstrate their commitment to excellence. Thank you for setting the standard for peak performance and having pride in all you do for our students. And then the like owner of the school, the like guy who started it. Um, and then today's date. And like I said, it's the school, the college name all over it. So I did not know I was getting that. And I'm actually excited and happy. They started clapping for me and everything. And wow, the kids really like me. Go figure.